Hello, everybody, and welcome to the stream or where we go for the first time publicly showing what we've built over the last few months. Uh, first, I wanted to thank the team. It's been a lot of hard work to get to this point, and now we get to finally show it off to everyone publicly. Uh, before I get started and jumping in to everything that we've done on the NFT side, I wanted to first introduce myself. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'm uh, Tommy Stalnick. I'm the founder and CEO of Single, and uh, I wanted to give anybody who's unfamiliar kind of a little bit of our background. Uh, so back in 2018, when we started the company, Taylor and I, uh, we sought out to plug the holes in Shopify for the music industry. Uh, we wanted to make sure that artists were able to better sell their music to their fans direct through their own storefront. And by doing so, retain more ownership, more data, and co basically control of everything. And over time, after launching in 2018, we've been able to distribute over 5 million records through our system uh, for artists like Adele and the Foo Fighters and Nine Inch Nails and the list goes on. And we, we couldn't be more thankful for the artists that we get to work with on a daily basis. <coughs> so what we've kind of seen over time as Single has progressed from launch in 2018 to now is we've always tried to stay ahead of the curve when it comes to what artists uh, can and should sell direct rather than defaulting to third-party platforms and we the reason why we chose Shopify in the first place was because we saw that as the best place for growth for artists and the best potential to be able to give flexibility to do really whatever they wanted <coughs> our overall strategy has basically when we moved from music we moved into video was if we can bring it home let's do it if there's a way that we can solve it to where the fans can have just as good of an experience buying it direct. Let's do that. So we moved from uh, music into video. Video was one of the things that we did over the pandemic to make sure that artists could sell tickets and treat their own store as their venue. Uh, that way they could host their live streams, treat t-shirts as tickets, do a lot of things that uh, are basically very difficult to do, if not impossible on other platforms. Uh, but again, doing it direct. They're creating those relationships. Over the last year, we've been able to help artists sell over a million tickets, generate over 24 million in revenue through their streams. And last year, uh, we were proud to see how much that they were able to grow during one of the worst times uh, for the music industry. 2021 was a very interesting year, obviously coming out of the pandemic, live coming back, uh, and this growth of new technology uh, in NFTs. Part of the reason why Single has chosen to get into this was, again, we see the same thing that happened in live streaming where third party platforms spin up, artists flock to them, and you are building their platforms rather than building your own. So we wanted to stop that, basically give you the option you didn't have to. We were doing the Kings of Leon standard release several months ago, and when we did that, they did the release on OpenSea, and that was the moment when we said, looks like we're getting into the NFT game. What we really want to do is make sure that the experience is going to be great, not only for artists, but for their fans as well, too. Uh, if we were going to get into anything, we always try to make sure that the experience is great for both sides of the, the equation. And so, on the NFT piece, and I'll get into explaining NFTs and all that kind of stuff, but w the, when we decided to get into it, we kind of had a few main criteria. We needed to make sure that it was easy to use for the artist. Fans could pay with their credit card, pay with things that they don't have to be crypto native. They don't have to be very well versed in this world. Uh, and they also needed to be environmentally conscious. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on uh, in like basically showing all how all the different blockchains can be very intensive on energy usage and we wanted to make sure that we weren't adding to that same uh, problem so we think that we've solved a lot of that and we're really excited to be able to show you everything that we've built today before i get into kind of the what what we've done i kind of want to just start at the basics what is an nft what does it do where is it going where do we see it going and what is our future for them an analogy that I try to use uh, whenever I'm doing kind of explaining things is I try to think about how would I would explain it to my 72 year old dad. Uh, 
the way that I look at it in NFT is a key and there's doors, right? And so if you're looking at a door and their door has a deadbolt on it and there's only two keys for those doors, the keys look identical. They uh, both can open the door, they have the same pattern, but obviously because they are two physically different keys, they are two inherently different things, but they serve the same function. Now the other side of it too is if you wanted to determine the value of what that key is, a key being on, a key that you would find on the ground as you're walking down the street is effectively worth nothing, right? Because you don't know what it unlocks, you don't know if it actually provides any value to you. Uh, but if behind that door, if the uh, the the key to the door is a million dollars, that key is obviously worth a lot more. And right now, it's kind of in the phase of NFTs are keys, and the keys can look a lot of different ways. They can be art, they can be video, but the underlying thing is that there's data on there that allows that key, that NFT, to unlock something. And so that's the phase of where Single is going. We want to take an NFT, take the key, and be able to unlock experiences, unlock things in commerce, and really bridge the gap between NFTs in terms of a digital asset and what happens in terms of monetization around merchandise and unlocking content and that kind of thing. So taking a lot of the stuff we've already done. Uh, so I think it's probably easiest to just kind of jump in to what we're doing and where we're going. Just give me one second. So usually we would have like a little bit, I would be in my office. I'm actually at my house right now. Um, I am recovering from COVID. You I would actually have like my whole studio set up and everything and it would be a little bit better. So now I'm kind of freewheeling it from my home uh, gaming computer. So hopefully I can get everything going uh, right. But I think we've got it all set up for you today. What you're looking at here is our website. And what most people may not realize is that Singles' own website is built on Shopify. Uh, we obviously don't sell anything direct necessarily, but it kind of is the best way to put our money where our mouth is to host our own website on the platform that we've integrated so deeply with. And what I'm going to do today is using our own website, I'm going to create an NFT and put it up for sale. We're going to buy it. And then at the end of this, I'm going to make some available that all of you can have uh, for free as a token of appreciation for joining the stream today. Uh, and that's also part of the reason why if I mess up a few questions or if I have some brain fog, that is serious, by the way. <coughs> so what you're looking at here is our website and anybody can go check this out. Underlying all of this is, again, Shopify. And what I have here is three different tabs that kind of show the setup between our homepage website, our app, and then how it's linked into Shopify. So Shopify, our app, and this website are all kind of linked together. And if anybody has not actually seen our app before, this is what it looks like when you log in. This gives you a place to kind of jump to all the different services we provide between fan insights, digital delivery, uh, live streaming and video rentals, all that kind of stuff. But it's also now a new tab on the left for NFTs. This NFT was the first one we ever minted, minted publicly and gave it to only our employees. So it was kind of a thing to commemorate when we launched it a few weeks back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create another one together and I'm going to drop it in the chat and everyone will be able to have an NFT commemorating this launch as well. All right, so step one, what we've tried to do is make sure that the setup process is as smooth and simple as a checkout process. So there's only four steps to this. We walk you through and uh, guide it through in a lot of ways. And then that way we make sure that it's as simple for anybody. You can set it up in five minutes and you can start selling your NFT. So going down the line here, step one, this is the create page. On this page, this is where we're going to go and we're going to grab some artwork that we want to put up as our NFT. I've created this one uh, today to kind of just use as the example. And we're just going to call it NFT launch, oh, launch sunset. The artist will use single ink. And then the description, this NFT commemorates our new NFT feature and public launch. 
And right here, when somebody has an NFT in their possession, there is a field for a URL. So basically what all the data that I'm filling in right here is the metadata that's actually going to be on the NFT itself. So what we're gonna do for this one is we're just gonna use singles website. So we're gonna say this is, oh, I need to put the thing on the front of it. All right, there you go. The next phase that we have here is the pricing and availability. So in the pricing and availability, this is where you can charge however you want, much you want for your NFT. We'll get into kind of how the pricing functions because it's a little bit different between the primary sale, which is the first sale that happens on Shopify and the secondary on the next step that gets into the royalty side. But here what we're doing is we're basically just saying, okay, I want this thing to be, let's say 25 bucks. And then I'm going to make the total supply on this. This is the total amount that will be available publicly. Once they're, once all of them have been purchased, they're gone. So it's effectively the inventory of this digital item and sets the scarcity on the NFT. So for this one, we're going to say, let's make it 100, right? We've added in the ability to do a randomized or sequential ordering. So on the randomized ordering side, this enables you to, when you put something up for sale, you don't necessarily have to worry about botting. It just automatically will just give a randomized number to anybody. But you can also do sequential ordering if you want to make it to where your first buyer gets number one, second, two, and so on. Uh, so it's kind of up to you at this point if you want to do randomized or sequential. The next bit that we have is a release date. So on the release date side of things, what this does is creates a countdown page that you can share with all of your fans uh, when with the image of the NFT and a countdown to when it's going to drop. The coolest part about this is that it actually redirects the fan to the product the moment that it hits zero. And so that way the fans can sit on it and they'll know that it's dropping. They can wait for the countdown and automatically be redirected into the page. But even cooler than that is because of our live streaming service, we actually can set it up in a way to where you can drop people into a live streaming drop party where all of the NFTs are featured beneath their beneath the product or beneath the video player. And then that way uh, you can actually feature all the NFTs that you've just released at the same time you put up uh, the video. So for now, I'm just going to set the release date to today. So that way we can purchase this once I actually publish it. This next bit where it talks about the associated album is something that's actually new and pretty unique to single in the sense of how we have integrated our digital music services and NFTs. One of the biggest reasons why artists use single is to make sure that their album sales count on the charts. It's what has helped our company grow so well and enabled us to work with the artists that we work with. Now, Billboard has fairly unique rules. They change them. Don't need to get into that whole thing. But when they have rules around NFTs, we want to make sure that we stay compliant with those rules, but also are able to push things forward. So we've created, or will be creating, this is uh, currently in development, and al basically we're calling an album upgrade. And that's going to enable you to say, okay, this NFT is associated with di this digital release from my library. And when a fan buys this NFT at the same time they buy that digital album, the artwork of the NFT will be applied to that digital download. By doing that, we don't, we're not putting music directly onto the blockchain just yet. We will be doing that. I'll get into it. Uh, but we will not be putting music on the blockchain just yet. It enables you to have something that is chart reportable, separates the music from the actual NFT, non-bundled, uh, and you can do things like creating a unique or digitally signed version of the album artwork, unique colorway. You also be able to use all the alternate covers that may have been created when you were uh, designing the cover of your album. So it's going to be a really great feature for artists to be able to make sure that the album sales still count and still be able to sell NFTs at the same time. For now, I'm not going to set that one though. We're going to go through the normal process and what we're trying to do is also make sure that we've baked in enough warnings into the system of what's what you can and can't do or what what you know, roadblocks you might hit so this is basically saying don't change the quantity of the nft in shopify you can update the total supply in single before it releases but changing the quantity at shopify at any point will result in errors so we just ask that you don't do that and that just comes down to the nature of how nfts function so i'm going to go ahead and click i understand 
And the next part is the wallets. And so there was a question that got sent over to us earlier that was asking about wallets, uh, how they function and what they are. Basically, they function for two things, uh, at least in, in how our works. So I'm going to kind of dumb it down quite a bit. But NFTs are where, uh, excuse me, wallets are where NFTs are stored. So when a fan assumes control or actually um, assumes custody of an NFT, they hold it in their digital wallet. So it's something we recommend Phantom. It's one that actually gets applied to Chrome browsers. But effectively, the idea is where are you actually storing the NFT so you can uh, you hold it there. And then any time that a website needs to reference that NFT, that's where it references. So basically, you can use it uh, as a login in the future. But for now, on the royalty side, uh, what it's actually used for is how, how on a, when an NFT is sold on the secondary market, where do those royalties go? And that's what the other aspect of a wallet is. It's where you store your cryptocurrency and your NFTs. And so that way, when an NFT gets sold, you sell it primarily on, on Shopify, you're able to get the dollar or however much you charge for it. And then on the secondary market, you're able to charge it for whatever you want. And then you'll get your royalties back on that to everybody that's on the royalty pool. So this is the wallet, uh, the creator pool that we have right here. And you can connect as many wallets as you want. So right here, what you have is the secondary NFT sales include a 10% royalty paid to the wallets listed below. Add multiple wallets to split royalties automatically by percentage. A 5% fee is allocated to single has automatically been added. So what that means is on the primary sale of an NFT, primary sale being through your Shopify storefront, you can charge whatever you want. And that could be $10, it could be $100. On the primary sale, single charges you $5 plus the fee, uh, the network fee. A network fee on Solana is not exactly the same thing as a gas fee in Ethereum. Network fees on Solana are roughly 85 cents. They're variable slightly, but they're not nearly as expensive and they don't tend, they don't go much higher than that. And there's actually quite a, a good potential that it's going to go lower. And if it goes lower, we will actually be passing those costs back on to artists uh, because they're, they're basically, is just, if they're lowering the fees, we're not going to hold on to that for no reason. So what we're going to do here is add on for the secondary sale. On the secondary side, once a fan has an NFT in their possession and then they are, go to a market like Magic Eden and soon OpenSea, if the rumors are true, and they sell that NFT on the secondary market, you get a 10% royalty. There's a 10% royalty that comes back on every one of the secondary sales. Of that 10%, 95% stays with the artist and 5% goes to single. So effectively 0.5% of the gross sale in the secondary market. The reason why we're doing that is it actually enables us to track the secondary sales and feed them into our data. And so that way we'll be able to present those two back to you so you can see how many royalties you've actually collected over time on the secondary market for these. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect another wallet. So in here, the next step is, okay, choose your wallet or you can add one manually. I'm going to use Phantom. And let me go ahead and log into my Phantom wallet really quickly. All right. connected my wallet so what you see here is now on the first one this is singles that's the, the five shares and the next one is my personal phantom wallet with the shares of 95 and so that's 95 percent of the 10 percent royalty on the secondary market you can add as many different wallets as you want to on this one and so that way you can uh, you can add as many as you want to onto this and so then on the secondary market it splits as much as you want the Next step is reviewing it for sale. So the last step in the process of uh, before publishing it, these into a Shopify storefront is effectively checking your work. So we have gone through the creation process, we've connected our wallets, now we're reviewing. 
Here we have the collection info, just making sure that all of the data is correct that we want to have on here. Price of 25, total supply of 100. And then this is the royalty pool. Every, all the wallets that will be right in here. Once I verified that all this information is correct, we're gonna go and publish the collection. So during the publish portion of it, effectively what we're doing behind the scenes is we're creating the product in Shopify. Uh, we are uh, creating the product in Shopify, setting the inventory and setting ourselves as the fulfillment provider. So that way Shopify is making sure that as soon as it's sold out, the product is listed as sold out and then there's not this disconnect between Shopify's APIs and ours because of timing. So we're setting that inventory and that's part of why at the beginning when it said, please don't change your, uh, the inventory count, that's the reasoning too. It'll create that disconnect between us and Shopify. The last thing that it's also giving you an option to do is create an upsell campaign for an NFT. And so upsell campaigns are something where when somebody buys something, say like a t-shirt or an album or something else, you can promote another product. We've had this for a while for our music service, and now you will be able to use it for NFTs as well. And I'm going to add it to an existing campaign by going over to my uh, upsell campaigns and going into this demo upsell that I've already created, and then we're gonna go buy it through the website as well. So let's go ahead and add, we're going to attach. Actually here, let me edit this campaign. Come in here, we're gonna do my NFT. I'm going to update the upsell campaign that we have on the front of our site. So now what you'll see is in the back end of a uh, single, you have the NFT published here for the sunset launch. And then we have the previous one that we had for internally. So on the sunset launch here, we've got the price, total supply, how many have been sold and what the revenue is off of this. And we have the collection info and all the different uh, information in here. I'm going to click this view in store. And now you can see this product in our sing on Singles website. So the same site that you're watching this video on right now now has this NFT for sale. I'll drop the link in shortly. And so we have the 100 available in here. It commemorates the new feature and launch, and it costs $25. We have a discount applied, so when you're actually checking out, it's going to go to zero, so you don't have to worry about that. But on the front page of the site, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. And we have our product in there. Uh, see, I was debating whether or not I was going to do that upsell because it, like, I hadn't tested it and I knew it wasn't going to work on that point too. But it's all right. We'll go back to the actual product. We'll buy it that way. So we've got the product here. And then I'm going to go ahead and go through the process of buying it and then actually claiming it. All right, so I'm gonna buy it now. All right, I'm gonna use my email address. Say first name, Tommy. Doing the office, not my house. I'm not doxing myself. I'll save that. All right, going to complete the order. Okay, so what's happening right now is the payment side is all happening on the Shopify side of things. And so on the Shopify side, fans are paying the artist directly for that NFT. And then the blockchain aspect of it is all happening on single side. So behind the scenes, what's happening is single is minting that NFT, creating a wallet that the uh, fan will be pulling that NFT from, basically claiming it from that. And then once that wallet has claimed it, we will actually be burning that wallet as well too. So there's only one NFT sitting in a custodial wallet temporarily at any given time where the fan can actually come and claim the NFT from it. 
so what's happening behind the scenes right now is it's sending an email to me uh, and then the I, when I check my email I'll pull that up there will be a link in it for me to claim my NFT grab that real quick All right, so this is what the purchase looks like when it showed the fan side. So this is how they're going to claim it. They received it in their email, said, hey, you have an NFT, do you want to claim it? And soon on that same page where it had the order confirmation side, we're actually going to put uh, some links directly into it so they don't have to wait for the email. That's something that we're working on right now too. So in here, we're going to go ahead and claim the NFT. So I got number 11 out of 100. I'm going to claim it. And then it's going to walk me through the process as a fan of do I have a Solana wallet and I'm going to claim it. So once an NFT has been transferred to your wallet, you can show it off, trade and sell with fans. We've actually tried to make this really simple. So do I have a wallet? Yes or no. If I said no, this is where the wallet creation process and how we walk through on the fan side. So if you don't have a Solana wallet, we recommend Phantom. Phantom has a fantastic user experience and they just released a mobile app. And so with the mobile app, you, they'll actually be able to claim it from their phones as well too now. Uh, but I already have logged in from linking my wallet the first time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click connect wallet. On the, this is the list of supported wallets. You can also add them manually if you want to, if the fan has one that they wanna add manually. And then do it phantom. And so the last phase of this is, okay, you're almost done. We've got your wallet connected. I was already logged into Phantom, so the wallet address showed up here. And now I'm going to start the transfer. So transfers can take up to uh, 30 seconds, sometimes longer. But fortunately, the Solana blockchain has very quick tr uh, transaction time. So that's what's ha what's happening right now as it's doing that transfer is that pulling from that custodial wallet that I described before and transferring it into my personal wallet and then I will actually have the NFT in possession in my phantom wallet. We also have tried to make it really simple on the fan to be able to share their ownership of that NFT by providing a landing page and some on ramps into Magic Eden for the resale of their NFT as well. And so we have the transfer is successful and so now we've got three options or four really but we can share or download your nft the download share downloads the image share and then also view on explorer the share page is a landing page that we've created where fans can put this and share it on social media show it off to their friends but also their friends can click on view explorer and this actually shows that the metadata of the nft on the solana blockchain so you can verify that it is an nft and that it has actually been minted and who is holding it and so on here we have the uh, launch sunset number 11 just like we have on this side so now in the app itself go back to the app side of things i'll refresh this we'll see the amount soon uh, it takes a, a little bit of time we have a bit of delay from shopify's apis to us but the total sold and the revenue will begin to report into this to show how many have actually been sold So I see there's a few questions coming through, So, and I want to make sure that I'm answering those as well, too. I saw that before, while I was looking at it, caught it out of the corner of my eye. Somebody was asking a question about uh, whether or not it's just images right now. And right now it is, and that's kind of uh, intentional, but at the same time, we're going to be moving into creating or uh, enabling NFTs of audio, video, and images. We already have music through our services. We already do video through our services, so it's quite obvious what we'll do there. But the main campaign ideas that we have for the moment are based around creating unique artwork through the storefronts. And then we're moving quickly into how do we make sure that we can tie in utility into these NFTs in a way that's easily consumable for the fans. So single already handles things like uh, live streaming. So we will be doing that. We also handle things like uh, music, and then we want to make sure that we can tie in the merchandise aspect of it as well. So unlocking access to particular merch 
uh, or discounts and that kind of thing. But some of the campaigns that we've been talking to for other artists are based around things like doing uh, baseball card collectibles for individual artists in the band, uh, posters. You can actually take existing artwork that you've done before. Old show posters are a fantastic example of things that maybe not be in print anymore uh, that people have put up. And then alternate album covers is another fantastic example. And uh, the good piece about this that we're going to be doing is we want to make sure that the utility of these NFTs will be editable and easily editable into the future. So we want to make sure that fans that hold this, you'll be able to provide them with new utility over time and host that content within your storefront. So in theory, that could be anything from holders of this NFT in a few months could have access to a like a private live stream. And a few months later after that, you could give them a free piece of merch or unlock a discount and that kind of thing. So single sits in a unique place because we are so deeply integrated with Shopify storefronts that we are trying to move rapidly into the creating the kind of a fan club experience or be able to unlock access sort of thing rather than heavily focusing on more of the randomization and other things on images, even though those are definitely pieces that we want to add in time as well too. So I want to make sure that we are kind of answer some of the questions that have been coming through. So if I could just like, I know that Alec and Elijah and Joe on the team have been trying to answer some as well, but I would just want to make sure that I can get some too as well. So let's go ahead and start jumping into the Q and A. All right. How much should I charge? So that's actually entirely up to you. And I think it comes down to that first analogy I was talking about of doors and keys. Uh, how much should you charge can really is kind of subjective if it's just art, right? So if it's a, a piece of artwork, how much do you feel that it you're, you value that piece of art? And the other side of it though, is if that NFT is providing specific utility, like discounts or access to a concert or something like that then obviously that increases the value because you're able to provide it and then uh, additionally if you plan on having that nft be something like a living breathing object where that you do let's just say like 500 fan club passes or something a year and you tier them so tier one has a certain amount and tier two or there's a certain rarity to the amount of uh, the artwork that you're going to do that should affect the pricing as well I saw, I mentioned, I think I saw it kind of glance through it earlier, talking about the fixed cost of something on free. So single exists in a unique spot where we're trying to kind of maintain a balance between doing a percentage based uh, business and doing things at a fixed cost. And the reason why we've always done things at fixed costs was predominantly because we want to make sure that we don't take a percentage of merchandise. So in the future, when you're able to bundle NFTs with t-shirts in the same way, if we were taking a percentage, we would end up taking a percentage of a t-shirt we had nothing to do with. So we try to strike that balance by saying it doesn't matter if you charge 25 bucks or you charge 10,000 bucks for an NFT, the cost on the primary sale will still only be that five, six dollars, depending on what the network fee is. So uh, why Solana? So Solana, we, when we were starting out and looking at different blockchain options, it kind of checked a lot of the boxes we were looking for. Um, obviously, one of the big ones was environmental uh, impact. A lot of artists that we work with, and rightfully so, uh, care about the environment. We want to make sure that they are able to uh, like kind of stick to their principles. So we did some research and saw that Solana had recently put out their energy usage report, and first the energy usage, I think we can share it in the chat as well too, basically stated that a transaction on Solana uses less energy than two Google searches. And it's 20 to 21 times less energy than uh, charging your phone. So that was one of them. The other one was the speed of the network. We kind of see artists as, go as being one of the first entry points for a lot of people that are not Web3 natives. And since that's new to them, we want to make sure that there's not this long disconnect where they don't understand it. And then that led into the last bit, which was fees. 
because Solana is a proof of stake network, it doesn't have the gas fees associated with Ethereum. So we didn't want to have fans have sticker shock and make something that basically make it to where you could have these be available to more fans because there isn't this large barrier to entry because of those fees. Um, okay, so then the from a fee side going into where the revenue is paid to. So th it's different on the primary and secondary market. Uh, on the primary sale, your fees will be going into Shopify. You're going to be selling it just like any other product in your storefront. So you, uh, when a fan checks out, it goes through your payment processor, and then you're paid as it would normally, just like a T-shirt. On uh, the secondary market, when sold through places like Magic Eden or OpenSea, those royalties are paid automatically in Solana to the wallet that you associated with that NFT. And the good thing is, obviously, you can transfer Solana into USD or whatever currency at some point in the future if you'd like. Um, but that way, you uh, can have kind of this automatic uh, thing happen, basically automatically royalties on the secondary side of things, but you're still getting paid normally as a piece of merch on the primary sale. So what happens if an artist uploads artwork they don't own? Uh, are there any checks in place? So we have kind of been at the forefront of this for a long time we've since we've distributed over five million records for a lot of major artists we tend to take a pretty like close view as to what uh, things are floating through our system um, so obviously much like anything else we have copyright policies we have dmca uh, takedowns and uh, we have policies to make sure that if we see something like it's pretty obvious when we see an artist install on a shopify side of things and <clears throat> they're uploading artwork that's not theirs or albums that are not theirs it becomes quite clear through our system but right now at the nft portion of the app requires us to unlock it for you and so for the time being anyway you you can't release nfts unless we actually go in and say okay this person can release them and that's a way for us to make sure to do kind of like a pre-vetting for uh, some of the people doing nfts with us as well So there was another question that came through that was asking about the legal info to say that the buying the rights, that's actually entirely up to you. So we don't control what your campaign looks like. And to be entirely honest with you, it kind of comes down to saying like, if you want to sell it with rights, you can. If you want to sell it without rights, again, it's up to you. It really comes down to the terms that you put on the NFT itself. We're not going to dictate that for you. So if you want to make sure that the fans are buying something and they have that understanding, it would be worth it in the description of the, the NFT, like on the website. You don't actually have to put it in the NFT itself. Uh, but the description on the website of the NFT that this doesn't provide you any, uh, you can actually link to maybe your terms of service or something like that, or actually just flat out say what the what it does grant you in the product description on Shopify. I'm trying to create a subscription service with each NFT. And if an NFT is resold on secondary, the new holder will be able to update the customer information. That's actually kind of exactly the direction that we're trying to go in. So, <clears throat> Single actually already enables people to sell and rent access to content through pay-per-view and live streaming. One of the natural things, progressions that we're going to do is enable people to subscribe. Now, subscribe in very much in the Web 2 sense, so we are working on Web 3 projects and Web 2 at the same time. But the goal is to effectively bridge them. So if we have a... Uh, subscription-based service where somebody wants to create a recurring content platform on Shopify, we will be doing that. But we're also going to take that same underlying architecture and features and bringing over our Web3 and NFT pieces so we could create some sort of NFT-based subscription service. So that's definitely something that's on our radar on what we want to do. So <clears throat> another one said, okay, but they will only own the copy of it, right? Not the actual uh, album cover copyright. That kind of relates back to my previous question uh, answer where it says it's kind of entirely up to you. But for the most part, I would say no. You wouldn't want to give away copyright to the cover unless you were charging an exorbitant amount for it because that's uh, you don't want to just give away the something that you've worked a lot of uh, very hard for. And then the other side of it too is, and will people pay for a JPEG that's already on Google? So that's absolutely a valid concern. I think where what 
the big piece of what's going to really change that concept in a lot of fans' minds is what does it actually do? Because going back to that key example, like you could take a photocopy of the key, but you couldn't put that key into the door, even though it effectively would look the same. So the, that's why we're trying to move more quickly into what does it actually do to provide value with the fan than uh, automatically moving into audio and video side, even though we absolutely plan on doing that. We want to make sure that you could have like cool looking uh, fan club passes and stuff like that but what does it actually unlock and so some concepts that we've been kicking around are you buy the nft and that would unlock access to like a free t-shirt or something like that so you pay for the nft but the t-shirt is free or behind that paywall is access to a live stream concert or something like that and if you went to google and you copied that piece of artwork and then tried to come in and log into that stream or get the benefits of that nft you wouldn't be able to get them and i think that that is what's going to be fundamental in making sure that fans understand that this is different and really starts reframing it in their minds of like what actual value does this provide to them the cool thing right now though is that from a limited perspective as like Twitter and as social networks are beginning to add more uh, integration into NFTs, fans are going to be showing a lot of their fandom through things like profile pictures where it has that hexagonal thing. We'll, we'll find out what Meta is doing. But as adoption spreads with NFTs, it, more and more social platforms are going to be adding in those features. And as those features in, it's just effectively going to snowball where fans can show more of their fandom. And the only way they can do that is by having the actual NFT because they have to verify it through that wallet. So it's the utility side of things, but it's also like the ecosystem just more broadly <coughs> on the Internet is starting to support them more and then be able to show that you actually own it. So it's two sides. Um, let's see. I think you mentioned some restrictions regarding a certain type of Shopify subscription. Um, <clears throat> so right now the beta program for Shopify is based on Shopify plus. So Shopify plus storefronts. Now, uh, I would recommend like reaching out to our team uh, to kind of walk through options that you have in the meantime. Uh, it, you can kind of talk to us about like some of the plans that you have and there may be ways to work with us uh, and have like kind of work through us to enable to achieve kind of what you're trying to do. So, but right now the, the official NFT beta program on Shopify is through Plus. But again, I would still encourage you to talk to our team because we may have options for you. Uh, so somebody was asking if this is our live stream platform. This is. This is literally our live stream player. So this is the same service that we've been using for the last year and a half uh, to host our live stream events. It's our chat. It's our video player. And this is the same technology that you would be using if to do something like a drop party. Uh, if I actually, you know what, we can go ahead and do it. The it would It's going to cause having to refresh the page, but I can just show you what I mean. So let me go, let me change back over my screen here. So in our app on the live stream side of things, here's the actual event that you're looking at. And so if I wanted to say, take that, actually that I am gonna do, I'll do it right now. So take the link to the NFT. This is the one that was sold. I'll view it in the storefront. Copy. Oh, there's the one that I, there was the one that I sold. Where am I? There we go. All right, on the event. So this is the uh, event that you're looking at right here. This is the event page. And then if I go over to configure, this is the actual event that you're looking at. So we're going to get a little like meta on here for sure. Uh, the cool thing is, is that in within here, this is where you can do things like sound check, open and closing, and you can see what's happening behind the scenes before it gets open. But down here, I'm going to go ahead and I'll log in and I'll drop in the Oh, I think I typed that wrong. Hold on. There we go. Somebody keep, I was asking about Ethereum because I can actually see it in the chat now. Um, the the re main reasoning on that thing is partly energy, and it sounds like even with Ethereum too, it's going to still be a part of the problem. And they're they're heavily relying on on L twos. For anybody that's more novice, this kind of gets into the more technical side of things. But 
that's really been one of the main reasons why we haven't. We're not ruling it out by any measure, but it, that's kind of the big thing. The nice part about Solana is because of Wormhole and other services, you can take an NFT that's on Solana and convert it into Ethereum, but we, we're leaving our options open on that side of things, not to say that it's not uh, something we wouldn't do. But let me uh, go ahead and just finish adding this product to the merch table. So the... All right. Not to encourage everybody to refresh the page, but if you refresh the page shortly, you will see the NFT listed directly beneath the... Uh, there you go. Let's see. Shortly you'll see the NFT do it underneath the video player. All right. Whoa. Let's see. I think you mentioned... All right, there we go. All right. I don't know if we have any other questions coming through right now. Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse everybody. I was just adding that to the player, and then I'm going to drop in the, uh, the NFT into the chat so you can actually buy the thing. I went off script a little bit, so sorry about that. All right, let me go ahead and I'm going to drop the thing into the chat. All right, now I drop that back in the chat. So how do you ensure shipping is applied and paid for on a physical product is included with the sale of an NFT? So we've actually built our system from the beginning to be as compatible with physical products as possible. Um, the really the main reason why we have our like it's kind of the separate product of having the NFT versus the T-shirt is that Shopify handles the kind of knows that one is a physical product and one is digital. And so during the checkout, it'll, it'll apply shipping only to the t-shirt and not apply shipping on the NFT itself. Let's see. Wallets do get hacked, that is absolutely true. What I would recommend is like we have done vetting on our side of things, but you can only take uh, so many words for it too. I, the one that we recommend Phantom is, I think, I mean, they're just got out of their beta and I mean, they're still in their beta and they're only like 10 or a year old and they're now worth over a billion dollars, which is incredible. But uh, they have a lot of heavy backing on the security side of things. And, and we've, we've talked to their team, we trust their team, but obviously you can only go so far in this world. The, good thing is, is that because we don't, uh, the transactions aren't happening in Solana on the front end, it's all happening on Shopify. That's obviously a heavily vetted payment system. Uh, the, really the only worry that you would ever have on a wallet side of things is the custody of the NFT, which is obviously a big thing, but you don't have to worry nearly as much around the uh, like kind of a money aspect of it because of that Shopify kind of gate between where it's happening on the blockchain versus the payment side. Uh, yeah, so. so I don't know if we have, we've got any more, the, uh, the question side of things. I know we've got a bunch that were listed in there as well, too. I know the team's been trying to feed some to me as a, a question on the side. Okay. If I want to do the subscription idea now, I'll have to update the customer information. Um, yeah, I mean the, you probably wouldn't want to do like subscriptions on an nft we've i've been doing some research on that as well too there i know there's some projects that are working on that not any that are really fleshed out enough that we think are strong enough on that side of things 
but we're like I said before we're heavily invested in looking at that because we want to make sure that we're covering as many of the use cases as possible and subscriptions on NFTs are a big one especially when it comes down to the fan club side of thing being able to like transfer from one person to the next but also if there is a recurring payment side of things we're really trying to figure out how that piece is going to really flow naturally All right, I'm gonna going through the other thing. So there's a, so a physical T-shirt would have to be added to the cart manually. So uh, depends on what your the the concept is. So you actually could using a uh, an app like a third-party app like Bol uh, Bundles by Bold to take an NFT and a T-shirt and put it into the same transaction if you wanted to bundle the two together at the moment. And again, we're working on that, but. If you did do that, then you could set what the shipping would be and they don't have to be necessarily like two separate things if the idea is a bundle. But if the concept is just like if somebody buys a t-shirt and an NFT at the same time, how to make sure that shipping is uh, like it gets applied, that already functions normally. Uh, let's see. I like the fact that the hate club gave us a you guys rock. That's pretty awesome. I think I'm just I answered as many of them as I can going as far, but oh, there we go. The, all right, cool. Well, thank you again, everybody that uh, to t tuned in. This was kind of one of the first ones. Again, apologies for any of the the brain fog and kind of being all over the place on the live. We're trying to add the thing to the live stream side of things. That's uh, just say the COVID talking. Um, but thanks again. This is one of the first ones we've been able to do on this side of things. On the next steps side, if you're interested in moving forward, the the main thing is... Oh, wait. There was one more question that I think is important that I touch on, too. What happens if someone decides to close their single and Shopify account? Uh, that's completely fine. Because we do non-custodial wallets, we make sure that they are able to... They hold on to their NFT. We have the image hosted on uh, IPFS, which is an open source the interplanetary file system um, and by doing that that should have more resilience over time if something ever was to happen to single or even Shopify uh, and then they're able to, to kind of hold on to it that way effectively in perpetuity so we shouldn't have to worry too much uh, about that but again for anybody that's trying to get started and really wants to ask more questions please feel free we'll stick around in the chat for a little while and then when once we're done on that side of things we can uh, try to answer as many as possible and then otherwise just go to the actual if you go to features on our website under features and then go to the nfts down here at the bottom for anybody that hasn't done it yet you can go to the get started link there and that's going to put you into our process of getting started uh, our team will reach out to you, kind of talk to you. And again, if, even if you don't have Shopify Plus, I encourage you to go and talk to our team. We may have options for you as well. Uh, but at any rate, thank you again for taking the time and coming to hang out with us today. And then I will be on the chat for a little while to make sure that we answer whatever questions you have. Um, so thanks again, everybody.